today's Namaste Yoga continues our Benefits of Yoga series, and today's benefit is assimilation and elimination. Hello and welcome to episode 198 of Namaste Yoga. We're just two episodes away from our 200th celebration, which we will be filming tomorrow. Carrie and Sue are on the road today, traveling up from the United States, and lots of people are going to be coming from all over Ontario to join us for our celebration. And we're very excited to be seeing them tomorrow and filming <laughs> and we're just praying for good weather so that we can film outside i mean it's october and we're still filming outside uh, we realized that this might be our last couple of days filming outside we'll probably be heading inside any day now <laughs> to do our filming um so i have a testimonial to share with you oh also if you wanted to share your story of transformation with us how the last 200 episodes of namaste yoga has transformed your life you still have time to do that because episode 200 won't actually be airing until october the 18th we're filming it a couple of weeks early because it falls actually right around thanksgiving here in canada so we wanted to make sure that we had people come prior to that because we know everybody's going to be busy with their family then and so I'm going to set the cutoff date for that on October the 15th. So Tim has some time to put that video montage together. And we've been getting lots of great um, stories and photos. And uh, I had um, Jen from BC. She sent me this really awesome infographic uh, Im image, graphic image. <laughs> it's awesome, a graphic image. So fun. And apparently, her husband's writing a song for me, too. So, <laughs> yeah, there's so many great entries coming in. So, be creative. <laughs> it's going to be really fun. Go wild. Uh, lots of great speak pipes, too. You can put those, uh, enter those at melissawest.com, too. So, speak pipes are just really easy ways to send me a voice message on my website. You just click a button and it records your voice and you can send a voice message just uh, up to I think a minute and 30 seconds or is it even three minutes yeah I think 90 seconds so it's a great way to send in your story of transformation so I would love to include as many of you as possible from all over the world because I know not everybody can be here for our 200th episode okay so I have a testimonial to start with today this is from Patrick and the story really inspired me as well and he says hi melissa just wanted to say thank you for providing your yoga series online you have been an inspiration you are my first teacher and your yoga has changed my life for the better in ways i couldn't have imagined before i started more than just quitting smoking losing weight and improving my physical health your yoga has made me mentally healthy as well he said, I made my first donation today, and thank you for your donation, Patrick. Almost shamefully, as it isn't nearly enough for the effect it has had on me, but it's a start. I have a long way yet to catch up to where you are right now, but I know I will get there soon enough and look forward to the challenge in between. Thanks again, and please keep up the great work. Cheers, Patrick. So thank you also to Squeeze Yoga Clothing and you'll all get to meet Donna on the 200th episode because she'll be here. Today I'm wearing a brand new long sleeve bamboo top with a vine, a really um, subtle vine design and showing the layered look that you can do. We just got all over this layered look <laughs> on our last photo shoot. So this is also a fairly new uh, t-shirt underneath. It has a really frilly edge so you can layer the looks so that you <laughs> uh, keep warm and um, also 
mix and match things too. It's really fun. So I'm wearing the uh, black leggings with the purple t-shirt and then a bamboo top and it's just kind of fun to mix and mirror mix and match and layer especially in the fall it's a nice look and then um thanks to dusky leaf for our yoga mat and our props today you're going to need two blocks for your for your practice so i love these cork blocks they're really nice and heavy and stable okay let's get going with today's practice you can go ahead and rest back and lie down on your mats get comfortable Take a deep breath in, let it fall out of your mouth, and allow yourself to arrive here now. So this is one of the main benefits of yoga, digestion, good assimilation and elimination. You know, I love this benefit of yoga. It's one of my favorite benefits. And... Um, one of the main things I focus on in my own practice every morning when I get up in the mornings is getting my digestion going through my yoga practice. So good digestion is about absorbing what you need and eliminating what you don't need. And this is physically in your body with your food, of course. And liquids, too, that happens through your kidneys. Physically, it happens through your small and large intestines. But also emotionally, mentally, energetically, and spiritually. So when your digestive system is healthy, you will be able to receive nourishment from your food, but also from people in your life. So it's important to receive nourishment from the people in your life. Good digestion means letting yourself be nurtured and nourished. And in terms of good mental digestion, it may also be time to take stock of your belief systems, maybe even spiritual belief systems that no longer nourish you. And if you're always hungry or always craving food, it may be that you are not allowing yourself to be nurtured. And so you might possibly use food because there's a longing to fill hidden needs. Indigestion is caused as much by worry and stress as it is by taking in the wrong foods. Your stomach is where worry takes place. Digestive enzymes churn with anxiety until you can no longer stomach your food and you can no longer stomach what is happening. And then food is often used to pacify your anxiety, leading to further digestive difficulties. Your small intestines absorb and assimilate nutrients and prepare unwanted foods for elimination. Your small intestines are also where you assimilate and absorb the details of your reality. This is where you process and digest what you have taken in. Intestinal issues relate to stress and tension from your daily life an inability to retain and absorb that which is beneficial and contributes to your equilibrium can relate to intestinal issues. Often then when there are issues with your small intestines it's because you get hung up on details and can't see the forest for the trees. Your large intestines are about releasing and letting go. So what Fear, guilt, and grief are holding you back from releasing and letting go. Problems with your large intestine and colon are about clinging to that which has already served its purpose. Holding on to grief and sadness prolongs the pain. When there is a fear of letting go, it is a lack of trust. 
Sometimes it's an inability to let go of ideas or belief systems that are no longer of use. And then on the other hand, if there's diarrhea, it could be because you reject ideas too quickly. So reflecting back on all of this, see what parts relate to you. And then begin to form an intention for what you would like to assimilate, take in what you would like to be nurtured and nourished by in this class. Or perhaps it might be something that you would like to release and let go of in this class. And once you've formed your intention, you can begin to wiggle and stretch out, but stay lying on your back. So, of course, it's probably no surprise. That bird flew really close to me. <laughs> Oh, it was, a it was a large butterfly then. <laughs> there you go, that's a symbol of transformation right there. No, no there's an another one really high up, a monarch. Okay. Yes, that's right, they're heading off to Mexico. Now, it, that just amazes me that they can actually cross Lake Ontario here, let alone make it to Mexico, it's just amazing. Okay, amazing creatures. It's probably no surprise to you that we're going to start with Apanasana, knee to chest pose. So you're going to draw your right knee into your chest. You can either keep your left knee bent or you can extend your left leg. If you have any knee issues, it's best to hold on behind your right knee. And the idea here is you're pressing on your ascending colon, encouraging elimination here. So as you're here, you can reflect on what ways of being you need to let go of right now. And from here, we'll come right into Supta Ardha um, Matsyandrasana. So you might want to use your block for this here. So you'll press into your right foot, tuck your left hip under, and bring your right knee over towards your left side look over your right shoulder. So you're coming into a reclined twist here. And this is so great for all your digestive organs, for your small and large intestines. And it helps to wring out your organs like a face cloth. So imagine wringing out all the toxins. And then when you come out of the twist, fresh blood comes in and all those organs are rejuvenated. And then slowly come out of the twist and release.
almost all the leaves are off the tree in trees in front of me here so they've all let go of their leaves and there's about four starlings watching our yoga class today <laughs> okay so let's do knee to chest pose on the other side now drawing your left knee in Remember to hold on behind your knee if you have any issues with your knees. And you can release your left leg down, place your left foot on the ground. You might want to bring your block over to the right side. This is really good to support your SI joints so that you're not hanging on the hinge of your SI joint. Press into your left foot, tuck your right hip under, and then place your left lower leg on the block so that it's in level with your hip. If it hangs down, then you're hanging on the hinges of your joint, the whole leg is. So if you support it, you're not stressing the joint as much. Turn your hip up towards the ceiling. You're not stressing the joint if it's in level with the hip. And then here you are in your twist. Great for your digestive system. The other thing that these twists are great for is your spine, which of course relates to your central nervous system. The calmer you are, the, the better you can digest your food as well. Each time you breathe out, really breathe your belly back. And then you'll come back and press into your left foot. Untuck your hips. Take a deep breath in. And let it fall out of your mouth. Now, so we've done something to compress our, our colon, twist it, both compressions. I also like to do things to lengthen my colon as well so that it's relaxed. That helps to let go, right? The more relaxed we are, <laughs> we're tense, it's harder. So I love um, Supta Varasana as well, reclined hero's pose. We're gonna do half reclined hero's pose. I like to use the block to fill the space here with your knee. So you're going to internally rotate your right knee, fill the space with the block. This stretches out the front of your right hip and helps to relax that space with your psoas muscle here, which is, will also help your colon, I believe. So with this stretch as always, you need to be cautious of your knees and feel the stretch more in the belly of your muscle and your quad and up and into your hip and not on the inside of your knee. That's why I like to fill the space here.
and then slowly release. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So internally rotate your left leg, fill the space with your block. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. And then slowly release and push your block off to the side. Roll to your side and make your way up to seated. So from seated, come to a comfortable seated position. Since we have our blocks out for our props today, I'm going to sit kneeling. This is also a really great position for digestion. Your heels pressing on your buttocks here connects with some acupuncture points that helps with digestion. And um, I go into a lot of detail with this in my Yoga for Digestion video that's in my shop and on my membership site. So that video has a whole bunch of stuff on digestion that we don't even go into here. So th that's great. If you're a member, check it out and you might want to check it out as well. There's a really specialized knowledge in that video. Um, we're also going to do alternate nostril breathing here. The reason for that is I alluded to earlier is that the more relaxed you are, the better your digestion can be. So if you're in fight or flight mode, which is your sympathetic nervous system, digestion can't happen. It's dropping into your parasympathetic nervous system is, is the system where digestion takes place. So by doing practices like alternate nostril breathing, you can encourage digestive digestion to happen. Yeah, that's why they say um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't eat like right before you go to bed and stuff like that, because you need to, your digestion, yeah, you need to be resting <laughs> so that repair can happen. Okay, so let's, um, Let's do some alternate nostril breathing. With your left hand, you can bring your thumb and index finger together. We just did a really great video in our daily video practice, in our daily video practice. <laughs> Words are eluding me right now. Uh, in our living your yoga videos, our, our daily videos where we answer your questions. If you have any questions about yoga or people ask me all kinds of questions on those videos, um, you can send them to me like in your in your comments on YouTube or by email or on Facebook or in the membership site or on SpeakPipe on my on my website or on any of the comments on on the blog posts on my website I get them anywhere um, but somebody asked about lefty yoga was one of the topics the other day like what hand should I use for what if I'm doing alternate nostril breathing should I use my right hand or my left hand and I would say if you're left-handed by all means go ahead and use your left hand for alternate nostril breathing. That's totally fine. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> okay, so you're going to take your right hand or your left hand if you're left-handed and you're going to um, place your right thumb over your right nostril. And then you're going to breathe in through your left nostril. And then close your left nostril and breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril. Close right, breathe out left. Breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right. Close.
close right, breathe out left. Breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. Breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Breathe in right. Close right, breathe out left. We'll do one more round, breathe in left. Close left, breathe out right. Then breathe in right. And close right, breathe out left. You can lower your right hand down. And breathe through both your nostrils and feel the effects of this practice. Notice if it has calmed you at all. Such a great breath practice. It's really great to rinse your nasal passages too with a neti pot. So I just thought of that because I, I got a brand new neti pot because my <laughs> got broken <laughs> so um and i got a, a longer one this time i had one that looked more like a traditional teapot last time and this one just works so much better so um and we have lots of videos on my blog about neti pot and nasal rinsing as as well so you can look for that on my website too and it's really great because it makes alternate br nostril breathing just so clear so uh, it made me think of that when we were doing that okay let's see what's next after our breath practice to calm us for good digestion. Okay, good. Um, also to have good strong digestion for good assimilation, we need to stoke the digestive fire to have strength here in our third chakra. So boat pose. This is not a great practice if you have um, herniated discs or slip discs in your lumbar spine. So let me show a uh, modification if that's the case for you. If you do, this is what you're going to do instead. You're going to come on your back with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. Draw your elbows in slightly. Tuck your chin. Inhale. Exhale. Draw your lower ribs down towards your hip bones and curl up. Actually, I would prefer if you did these with your legs long because then you don't won't use your hip flexors. You'll actually use your abdominals. So that would be what you can do, and you'll just stay here and you'll breathe in and draw your navel down. Okay, and that way you'll be working your abdominals. The rest of us will be doing boat pose, Navasana. So bring your arms in front, draw your shoulder blades back, lengthen up through your spine, inhale here. Draw up through your pelvic floor like you're pulling up a zipper. Draw your navel back to your spine. Exhale, and you're going to lean back. And we'll maybe even take your arms out to the side for more intensity. Inhale. Exhale, draw your navel back to your spine. Inhale. Exhale. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out. Great, lower your arms down, come up and forward, open your knees, 
and stretch. And if you're lying on your back, just take your arms overhead to stretch out your abdominals. Maybe we'll do that more than once to stoke our abdominal fire. So draw your knees in, lengthen up through your spine, relax your shoulders down, draw your shoulder blades together and down your back, inhale. Exhale, lean back, draw up through your pelvic floor, draw your navel back. This time let's take our arms overhead, inhale, exhale, inhale, shaking is normal, exhale, inhale, exhale, Ooh, inhale, exhale, one more, inhale, and exhale. Great. <laughs> Come forward, open your knees, stretch. Oh. Okay, great. For the next one, you're going to need your blocks. We're going to start to be making our way up to standing now. So you'll need two blocks. So you'll take your blocks and put them at the top of your mat, like this, and come onto all fours. And then place your left foot between the blocks so that you're in a square lunge. Tuck your right toes under, inhale. Exhale and straighten out through both your legs so you're stretching out the backs of your legs. You're in a standing forward fold. Pyramid pose here. And then from here, you're going to turn your right toes out, drop your left sit bone, open up your right hip, and come up into Trikonasana, triangle pose. And then we'll do revolve triangle pose. So take your right hand down, drop your right sit bone and lift your left arm up. And then turn back towards your two blocks, bend both your knees, and we'll repeat that whole sequence on the other side. So take your left leg back, bring your right foot forward to between the two blocks, tuck your left toes under, straighten out through both your legs so you're in a, a forward fold here. And all these poses are great for digestion. Turn your left toes out, drop your right sit bone, open your left hip, Trikonasana.
and then lower your left hand down. Drop your left sit bone, your left hip bone, and bring your right arm up. Parivrit Trikanasana. And then you can let this posture fall out of your body. You're probably as, hopefully as happy about that as I am. <laughs> walk your back foot in and make your way up to standing. Okay, from standing, you're going to take your feet a little wider than hip width apart and take your arms overhead. We're going to do palm tree pose, Talasana, and inhale, and exhale, side bend to your right. So here you're lengthening out your large intestines. And then inhale back up to the center. And exhale inside bend to the left. And stay open through your right shoulder. And then just go gently from side to side. And bring your arms down, keep your feet wide. You're going to rotate to your right take your right hand over your left hip and your left hand over your right shoulder look over your right shoulder this is kati chakrasana And then come back to the center. Take a deep breath in. Let it fall out. Now we'll go the other way. So you'll rotate to your left. Take your right hand over your left hip. Over your left shoulder. And your left hand around your right hip. Look over your left shoulder. And then come back to the center, and you can also make this one more dynamic, so you can twist. OK, 
Keep your knees soft. And then come back to the center. And you're going to make your way down onto your mats, onto your stomach. So placing your weight on your belly is really good for your digestive system. Okay, from your stomach, we'll just get you to take your hands down by the side of your body. Tuck your tailbone under by pressing the front of your pelvis into the ground. Roll your shoulders back and up, palms face up. Lengthen long through both your legs until they reach off the ground and then lift your chest up off the ground. So Shalab Asana. Locust pose. And then lower down, press yourself up onto all fours. If you have knee issues, lie on your back and hug your knees into your chest. If not, you can come into Balasana, child's pose. Great for digestion because it's a very relaxing pose, but also because your knees are pressing into your ascending and descending colon. And then roll up through your spine. Come up to seated. I'm gonna do a seated twist. Take your legs out long in front of you. Bend your right leg in, place your foot flat on the floor. Wrap your left arm around your right leg. Place your right hand at the base of your spine, starting from the base of your spine, rotating through it. So again, twists are great for digestion and then you've got the added benefit that this leg press right into your ascending colon and then on the other side, it's gonna press into your descending colon. So bend your left leg in, press your foot into the ground, lengthen out through your spine, wrap your right arm around your left leg and turn towards your left leg. And come back to the center. Open your left leg out to the side, lengthen out long, inhale. Exhale, hinge forward through your hips so you're coming into Janu Shirshasana. Head beyond knee pose. Forward folds are great for digestion as well, especially if you have a body that anatomically folds forward more than mine, because you get more pushing on um, your digestive organs than I will. Oh, I was going to do this revolve too. So you can rotate your um, 
right ribs towards your right leg and come into revolved head beyond knee pose parivrit janu shirshasana And then come on up and we'll switch sides. So extend your left leg out, bend your right leg in, open your right leg out to the side, inhale. We're going to rotate your left side body towards your left leg, side bend over it, reach your right arm up and over. Some of you will be able to reach your right fingers towards your right big toe and hang on. You may even want to take your block and place it underneath your right knee there. And then Come on up, and we are going to finish with a mudra. So the mudra we're going to do today is the Pushan mudra. And for this one, for your right hand, the tips of your thumb, your index finger, and your middle finger on are together. And your other fingers are extended. And for your left hand, the tips of your thumb, your middle finger, and your ring finger are together. And your other fingers are extended. And this is important that you do this this way because your one hand is receiving and your one hand is letting go. So this is, Pushan is the god of nourishment. So we will do this mudra for three minutes. And I have a poem for you while you are, actually I'll save the poem for Shavasana. So we'll just focus on allowing this mudra to nourish us and to receive on the one hand and let go with the other.
So you can either finish your practice sitting with this mudra, or you can go ahead and rest back for Shavasana. So as you rest back in Shavasana, I have a poem for you today by Donna Faltz from her, her book called Limitless. And this poem is called Whatever Doesn't Serve. What weight can you put down right now, willingly relinquishing the pointed quills of guilt or judgment? What burden of the heart can lift? What dark corner can be lit? The candle flickering at first, then burning bright. With the next breath, let it go. That old story you've told yourself a million times. Whatever doesn't serve you on this path of truth, leave it behind. Offer this one fight, the simple sacrifice that in giving sets you free fully to fully live. So gradually allow your breath to deepen, wiggle and stretch out, and bend your knees, roll to your right side, and make your way up to seated. So I will see some of you tomorrow for the celebration and filming of our 200th episode. And if not, send me your testimonials of transformation so you can be part of our 200th celebration with our video montage. And I will see you next week or on the membership site. Namaste.